Number 10, Uluru Rock. I'll be honest, I'm a rock guy. I go on vacation, I'm goggles up the entire time. I love looking for geology and history. It's hard not to want to bring something home every trip, right? But depending where you are, you could be in a lot of trouble for doing so. In the Northern Territory of Australia, for example, there is a beautiful monumental sandstone formation. It's known as Ayers Rock or Uluru Rock. Now this site is sacred for the Aboriginal people of the land. They respectfully ask that no visitors take any piece of the sandstone home with them. Yet of course, some of us can't follow simple instructions and in numerous cases, bad luck has followed them home as well. Breakups, death of a loved one, you name it, it's all bad. Why risk it? Just leave things alone, you know? Number nine. Robert the Evil Doll. A man named Rob Otto, he was given a doll that looked a lot like him. One of his servants who didn't like him made him this doll. This was clearly a voodoo doll, right? Obviously, this is an obvious trap. Neighbors would then hear Robert talking to this doll. Robert and Robert the podcast, I guess. I don't know, tune in. Now, after Robert's untimely death, the new owners of the house found that same doll. They found it in the attic, still there. That family was haunted afterwards by the same doll. They would hear threats coming from it at night, so now now the doll is on display at a museum in Key West. No more threats, just glass cage forever. Number eight. Elmo. The Sesame Street icon has been in homes for many, many years. There was a literal stampede when Tickle Me Elmo was released. An employee was sadly trampled, got his ribs broken, it was horrible. People go crazy for these things. When the Elmo Knows Your Name toy was launched by Fisher Price back in 2005, there were 15,000 names ready to go. Only one family was traumatized. Only one. That's not bad, all things considered. That Elmo toy apparently spoke on its own, threatening to harm the family often, so they tossed it out immediately. This happened more than once though. The audio sounded off for some devices and some homes. Be like Elmo sounded like beat up Elmo. The Elmo phone was also released in 2009 and it often said 456, but in some cases it sounded like who wants to have very different things, those two. Those are two different phrases. Those are not the same at all. We're all learning things with Elmo, whether you like it or not. Number seven. Belcourt Castle Chairs. This one's like the opposite of musical chairs. These chairs are no fun at all. This Rhode Island ballroom is beautiful. It's a cottage mansion, a lot of wood, a lot of history. It smells great, I bet. I would have bet that there would be a ghost woman in the ballroom. Turns out it's actually a handful of chairs. Who knew? That was my second guess, handful of chairs. That's good. Visitors have reported an eerie feeling when standing close to these chairs. They get the chills, they get the sense of energy almost. Now, things certainly go a step further. Some guests have seen the chair move on their own, or they've had the chairs push against them, all of course by some invisible force. I'm not sure if I believe in ghosts personally, but if I saw a chair moving, yeah, that would do it. Just one of those would definitely flip my beliefs for sure. Haunted furniture, that, that gets me, that's pretty, that's pretty bad. Number six, the haunted skull. I'm pretty sure every skull is haunted, no? But I don't know. This one specifically, oh, this one's real haunted though, here we go. Located in the Burton Agnes Hall over in England, the screaming skull sits quite still, but its curse is very real and very active. The screaming skull once belonged to Catherine Ann Griffith, who died in 1620. Now, reports of strange figures or shadows around the skull, that's one thing, but many people believe they can still hear the screams of one Catherine Ann Griffith to this day. Number five, the unlucky mummy. Right off the bat, the unlucky mummy isn't an actual mummy per se. It's rather the lid of a coffin that once belonged to a high status woman who lived sometime around 950 BCE. So a little old, a little, little time ago. The mummy board wasn't seen again until the early 1800s AD. It was found in Thebes. Four Englishmen found it and of course they were celebrating this ancient piece of history, but it didn't take long for all four of those men to pass away from mysterious circumstances. If you're looking for more top tens on ancient history, come meet me over on our top 10 history channel. It's called Bumblebee. We do top 10s only on historical stuff. Ancient eras, mummies, silly Victorian era hats, cool shoes, I don't know, you name it. It's all over at Bumblebee. See you there. Number four. Mandy the Haunted Doll. Mandy lives in the Quesnel Museum in Canada. Awesome, nice and close to home. The staff of the museum insists that Mandy is kept in a separate display case all by herself because when she's with other dolls, she would end up knocking them over somehow, some way. Staff also reported that their lunches would disappear and that photos of the doll would end up glitching out. The lunches disappearing, that's for sure one dude who's blaming ghosts. That's actually not a bad plan. I kinda, I'm okay with that. But the photos, that's terrifying. That's a surefire sign that it's haunted. Number three. 
the great bed of wear. We figured we'd get nice and cozy for this next one. For starters, it's massive and it's cozy. It looks like the bed a king would certainly sleep in, and rightfully so. The great bed of wear was built for the royal family back in 1463. It was 12 feet by 12 feet. Jonas Fosbrook, a carpenter from that time, they impressed King Edward IV so much with their work that the king gave them a pension for the rest of their life. People would travel all across the land to see this bed. That's a fun family vacation. Yeah, we're gonna go see a bed. Yeah, Disneyland's closed today. Let's go see this bed. Shakespeare mentioned this bed in his play, The Twelfth Night, okay? This is a big deal. All those who stayed in the bed, though, they did not have a good night's rest. No, instead they woke up to scratches and bruises, or they would wake up just on the floor. Yeah, somehow they would roll out of a 12-foot bed. Today it can be found in the Victoria and Albert Museum, in case you wanna go in there and take a nap. Would you stay the night in this old, haunted, dirty, and probably very uncomfortable bed? Sound off below, I definitely wouldn't. Number two the Baker's Wedding Dress. Back in 1849 in the small town of Altoona, Pennsylvania, Elias Baker and his wife, Hetty, lived in the Baker Mansion. They had two sons and one daughter named Anna Baker. Anna had fallen in love with one of her father's employees. Nice. Another steel worker, but her father wouldn't allow the relationship to take off. So Anna vowed to never marry again ever. She locked herself in her room for the time being. And when her father passed away in 1848, she went to find her true love again, but he had since moved on and settled down. Yeah, worst case Scenario. So she spent the rest of her days behaving erratically and her soul apparently still haunts that same wedding dress today. Not just the dress, also the mansion is apparently haunted as well. Guests would report furniture moving around. What's with ghosts and moving furniture? Where were these guys when I was moving? And finally, number one, the Bassano vase. This vase comes from the 15th century. It made for an excellent wedding gift, of course, in Italy one day, but the night before, the big day, bride sadly lost her life with the vase still in her possession. So the family kept it afterwards, of course, but as the vase was passed down the family line, a pattern began to unveil itself. It was kind of hard to ignore. Whomever held possession of the Bazzano vase died shortly after in some way, shape, or form. Now keep in mind, this was the 15th century, so the average lifespan was 30 to 40 years old on a good day. But after many deaths in the family, it was packed away for good, just to be safe, or so they thought. The vase showed up again in 1988 alongside a note. The note was pretty to the point. It said, beware this vase brings death. End of note. Pretty simple, I like it. Whoever found it was probably like, huh, okay, and then continued on with it. And then it was auctioned for over $2,000 sans note. Weird, they left the note out of that, that's odd. The pharmacist who won the auction, well, you guessed it, passed away within months. Number 10, space balls. Over the course of decades, humans have begun to clog up the Earth's surrounding area with space junk. Defunct projects, satellites, broken or discarded pieces of spacecrafts, it will become a serious problem at some point and it's beginning to show. There have been many instances now of strange metallic balls crashing into the ground and being found in multiple countries. Mexico, Spain, Vietnam, Namibia, Australia, and many others. They hurtle towards the Earth and some have crashed a little too close for comfort. Most of these mysterious objects seem to just be auxiliary fuel tanks from satellites that were discarded or crashed nearby, and they fell off early, landing in a completely different place than was planned. But some of these, like the one in Mexico, still require more investigation as they don't match any of the parts that we would have expected to be entering our atmosphere. This one even has an antenna and reportedly fell from the sky while making strange noises, but was not accompanied by any fire, like a lot of debris entering the atmosphere would have. So where did these things come from then? Number 9. WTF In 2013, the Catalina Sky Survey at the University of Arizona spotted an object in the night sky, and it seemed to have some weird properties. The object didn't move as though it was solid like rock, but it seemed to possibly be hollow. And it had a density of about 10% that of water, and it seemed to be about 6.5 feet in diameter large enough to house a person. But this didn't match any of the space junk that space agencies had been tracking for the previous years, and adding even more to the confusion, the object seemed to disappear from sight, and it was not seen again until two years later, when it was officially given the name WT1190F, or WTF for short. Pretty fitting. Video and photos were taken of the object's re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, which was a scientific feat on its own, but the object was never recovered. It is assumed that it burned up from the immense heat of re-entry, but many people believe that it crashed into the ocean and whatever was inside was either captured or lies in wait at the bottom of the sea. Like those UFOs NASA admits that they found. Remember those? That was crazy. Number 8. 
struck by a space rock. All right, we've got two stories here, and you can either think of them as the result of a curse or karma or cosmic coincidence, but either way, these two women had a bad day. In 2001, Lottie Williams was exercising in a park in Tulsa, Oklahoma, when she looked up and saw a great ball of fire in the air. It was a rocket coming back towards Earth. She watched it approach, and as it got larger in the sky, she expressed her worry to her friends, but then it broke up into pieces and it was no longer visible to her. A few moments later, she felt what she described as a tap on her shoulder, and then something fell to the ground. This small blackened piece of metal had fallen from the rocket and just grazed her, and it could have been a lot worse, but she walked away being the first person person to be hit by man-made space debris. But another woman was not as lucky. On November 30th, 1954, Ann Hodges was napping in her Alabama home when a piece of meteorite crashed through her roof and struck her in the side. It left a three foot wide hole in her roof and also left a massive bruise on her thigh and hand where she was hit. Luckily, the damages were only surface level, and though she went to the hospital the next night, it was because of her stress, not the injury. But if the space rock had been a few inches to the side, Ann would not have lived to tell the tale as the first person to be struck by a meteorite. I'm not sure if she's cursed with extremely bad luck or has really good luck. I'll leave that up to you. Number 7. Skylab Launched by NASA as the first American space station, Skylab was cursed with issues from the moment it launched. The station strapped to a Saturn V rocket sustained severe damage during its deployment, including the loss of the station's micrometeoroid shield and one of its main solar panels, requiring it to have the first ever repair to an object in space, which is pretty cool. But it was again hit with problems when one of the pieces destabilized from orbit earlier than expected and crashed back to Earth, but it doesn't stop there. Due to increased solar activity, Skylab actually ended up falling towards Earth a year earlier than it was supposed to. There was supposed to be a shuttle mission to boost it back into orbit, but the shuttle wasn't ready in time. In an international media frenzy, the Skylab crash was everywhere. People had shirts with targets, contests were made to bring pieces of the wreckage for cash prizes, and people waited for the show. Due to a 4% calculation error on re-entry, the station did not burn up as quickly as expected, and pieces fell into Australia only 300 miles from Perth in an almost completely unpopulated area. Man, talk about a crash and burn. These scientists missed the mark so many times it's impressive the thing even hit Earth. Number 6. 300 million year old machine part in 2013, a Russian man named Dmitry was adding coal to a fire when he noticed something strange. A shiny piece of metal was sticking out of the rock, and when he broke open the piece of coal, he found what seemed to be a piece of a metal bar with teeth, like a piece of a gear. When analyzed, it was found to be made of aluminum with about 3% magnesium, an alloy that is not generally produced today. Not only that, but further examination shows machining marks, implying that it's a man-made piece, and it's similar to those that we may find in a modern microscope or other small machinery. But no one can explain how a seemingly man-made part appears in a piece of coal that was 300 million years old. So was this thing a remnant of a past unknown civilization? Maybe something from a time traveler or alien? One explanation is that it could have fallen to Earth from a meteorite all that time ago, but it wouldn't explain the fact that it seems man-made. This little hunk of metal continues to baffle scientists today. Number 5. Nuclear Nuisance the Cosmos 954 reconnaissance satellite launched by the Soviet Union in 1977 had some major issues. The launch went fine. Unlike Skylab, its deployment also went off without a hitch, and this long-term orbital satellite seemed like another mission success for the Soviet space program. It was meant to be circling the globe for years and years, but just three months later, the North American Aerospace Defense Command noticed the satellite making erratic maneuvers, changing the altitude of its orbit by up to 50 miles. And in secret meetings, the Soviet officials warned their US counterparts that they had lost control over the vehicle, and the system, which was intended to propel the spent nuclear reactor core into a safe disposal orbit, had failed. And just four months after its launch, it fell towards the Earth, right over Canada's Northwest Territories. The Soviets claimed that it had completely disintegrated upon re-entry, but that was not the case, as we discovered a 600 kilometer path of debris leading through the country. And a huge portion of it was radioactive because they failed to launch the reactor out. We Canadians began Operation Morning Light, a recovery effort that lasted over a year and for which we billed the Soviet Union six million dollars, though they only ever paid us three. Many small pieces of debris were collected as well as 12 large portions of the satellite, only two of which were not radioactive. Number 4. Proof of Panspermia 
The theory of panspermia is that life did not naturally begin on Earth, but that it began with microbes stuck in space ice that fell to Earth on meteorites. And the amount of debate around this topic is huge, and we have a few examples that may just prove the theory. The Polonarua meteorite was one that fell in Sri Lanka in 2012, and meteorites are always a good find, but this one was different. 12 days after it was witnessed falling through the sky, a scientist published a paper stating that after studying some electron micrographs, his team discovered fossilized diatoms, microscopic phytoplankton inside the meteorite. In addition, his team of scientists reported in a separate article that they are, they are certain that it is a meteorite that originated from a comet that also contained living diatoms. The microbes were remarkably similar to those found on Earth, leading to a debate on whether it was simply contaminated from the Earth's surface. But there is another example with even stronger proof of microscopic alien life. In 2018, a meteorite landed on a frozen lake in Michigan, and when it was examined, thousands of organic compounds that were formed billions of years ago were found. It helped that the quick recovery, along with the cold temperature, kept the water inside frozen for studying. Research is still being done, but this find has thrown the scientific world for a loop. Hopefully the organisms don't leave us with some alien curse or disease. Number 3. The Chelyabinsk Meteor Many of us will remember the 2013 meteor that rocked the world. At 20 meters in diameter, it was the largest natural object to enter to our atmosphere since the Tunguska event, which destroyed a wide, remote, forested, and, and very sparsely populated area of Serbia. The Chelyabinsk meteor also is the only meteor confirmed to have resulted in many injuries, though they were all from indirect causes. There are many videos of the event and they are truly terrifying, especially when you learn that the meteor was completely undetected until it entered our atmosphere, which caused worldwide panic. The flash as it began to burn up was brighter than the sun, and when it exploded midair, the energy output was equivalent to the atomic weapon used on Hiroshima, sending out a massive shockwave that damaged buildings and was felt and heard for hundreds of miles. All of the 1500 people injured were hurt while running or from broken glass or other indirect factors of the meteor. There was even another meteor which was detected to have a close approach on the same day, which was 10 meters larger and flew by us only 16 hours later. Man, February 15th, 2013 was a busy day for meteors. Number 2. Oumuamua Discovered by the University of Hawaii's PanStars-1 telescope in 2017, Oumuamua is the first known interstellar object to visit our solar system. It was originally classified as a comet, but there were no signs of cometary activity after we witnessed it slingshot past the sun at a blistering speed of 196,000 miles per hour, or 87.3 kilometers per second. It was briefly classified as an asteroid until new measurements found it was accelerating slightly, which is very strange for any interstellar body. This massive cigar-shaped object is nearly a quarter mile long, or 400 meters, and its elongated shape is unlike anything we've witnessed in our solar system. Observation has shown that it may have come from the star system of Vega, though with the speed it was moving, it would have taken over 300 million years to make the journey to our solar system, and Vega was nowhere near that position at that time, leading to further questions. Many scientists believe that this could actually be an alien superstructure, as its strange journey and acceleration are studied more and more. Paul Kotis, manager of the Center for Near-Earth Object Studies at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said that it's a strange visitor from a faraway star system, shaped like nothing we've ever seen in our own solar system neighborhood. Whether it's just an interstellar asteroid or someone coming to see what's up with Earth, we may never know, as it's being launched away from us after making a slingshot maneuver around our sun, the angle and trajectory of which some use as proof as the object being controlled or even driven by something. And finally, we reach our number one, the Hypatia Stone. The Hypatia Stone is one of the single greatest astronomical discoveries that we have ever made. Found in the Sahara Desert by Ali A. Barakat, this is no ordinary meteorite, but one that contains the remnants of a rare type of supernova. Some have even described it as a supernova in a bottle. Named after the ancient mathematician and astronomer Hypatia, who was the first female scholar in her field to have her life and accomplishments recorded, overcoming sexism in the process, scientists are still learning more about its origins. It's believed that the stone was born in what is known as a Type 1a supernova, a rare kind of supernova where a dying star or white dwarf begins to leach energy off of a nearby star and regains energy in the process. These so-called vampire stars circle each other, until the white dwarf has recovered enough energy to reignite the stellar reaction actions and explodes in a massive cloud of dust and pure energy, shooting things imbued with strange elements out into the ether. 
Measuring the metals found inside the stone is how we verified that it came from this kind of supernova, and that it crashed to Earth nearly 28 million years ago, after being launched through space by the explosion. Having a supernova in our hands has helped us answer so many questions about the physics of space, but if you ask me, if there was one interstellar item that could have an alien curse, it's the rock that contains pieces of a rare supernova. Sounds like something an alien from Doctor Who would need to power their death machine or something. In our number 10 spot, we have the Ring of Sylvanius. Anyone a fan of the Lord of the Rings? I'm a mega fan, so if you are, reach out to me and let's be friends. But anyways, you may not know this, but the Ring exists. Yep, it's real. Allegedly, J.R.R. Tolkien was inspired by a ring called the Vein Ring or the Ring of Sylvanius that was said to be cursed. It was a gold ring dating to the 4th century AD England, and it was the property of a man named Sylvanius in 1785. It was apparently stolen, and Sylvanius put a curse on it. Eventually, it became the property of the Shute family, and their property eventually became a national trust property, and the ring is on display there. In 1929, a man named Sir Mortimer Wheeler discovered the curse upon it and discussed the details of the curse, such as the god invoked, with a very famous man by the name of J.R.R. Tolkien, thus birthed the story about the one powerful ring. Man, if there was one person dead that I could meet, it would be him. He created his own language, folks. I wish I could pick his brain on his thoughts about life. Anyways, this object is locked away in a display case, so we should be good. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can watch more content like this. In our number nine spot, we have the Unlucky Mummy. The Unlucky Mummy is an artifact that people legit believed started World War One. Oh, and the object was rumored to have sunk the Titanic. That's a very, very unlucky mummy. The Unlucky Mummy is an ancient Egyptian artifact that's either a painted wooden mummy board or an inner coffin lid that's now located in a British museum. It was originally found in Thebes and can be dated by its shape and style to around 950 to 900 BC. A British journalist obsessed with the fact that he thought it had magical powers analyzed it for some time and after three years at only age 36, he mysteriously passed away. People believed that the unlucky mummy was the reason. Wow, it's so wild to think about how different people's thoughts were back then compared to how people think now. Did people back then have crazy imaginations or are we too unimaginative and logical now that we miss the magic? Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. In our number eight spot, we have the Hexam Heads. The Hexam Heads were a pair of small stone heads about six centimeters high found in 1971 in a British town called Hexham by two boys by the name of Colin and Leslie Robson. They were digging in a garden when they stumbled across them and they brought them inside. Right away, paranormal phenomena began to happen in their house. One boy's hair was pulled at night, the heads would mysteriously be in new places, bottles were being thrown across the room, and their mother saw a man that was seemingly half man, half goat leaving the house. When the artifacts were given to a Celtic artifact expert, she and many others noticed a half man, half wolf leave the house or move about the house on many occasions. The woman also reported the feeling of a cold presence and her office door opening with no wind and the cause remained unknown. The heads got passed around a lot until suddenly they vanished and their whereabouts still remain unknown. Dun dun dun. In our number seven spot, we have the crying boy. The crying boy is a fascinating phenomenon. This is a mass produced print of a painting by an Italian painter by the name of Giovanni Bergolin, and the painting is literally of a boy crying. This painting was widely distributed in the 50s, but in the 80s, a theory around the painting began to arise, and people started to think that the painting was cursed. On September the 5th, 1985, a British newspaper reported that a firefighter had stated that undamaged copies of the painting were being found frequently at sites of burned houses. Of course, people began to believe that it was the paintings that were behind it because they would somehow come out untouched. It was later learned that the paintings did have varnish on them that made them fire retardant. However, the boy in the paintings was later discovered, a man named Don Bonello, and apparently he is tied to several fires, including the painter's studio. Yikes, okay, well this is scary. <laughs> 
I hope all of these paintings were somehow disposed of. I'm assuming not by fire, but in some way. But if not, then they need to be locked away in a fireproof cabinet of some sort. In our number six spot, we have the Bassano vase. The Bassano vase is a vase that needs to be locked away, and we need to also throw away the key because it is terrifying. I know, I know. It seems like an object that is just not threatening at all. I mean, come on. It's a vase. Something you put beautiful flowers in. Anyways, the vase is believed to be from the 15th century in Napoli, Italy. Apparently anyone that was ever the owner of it has died. I mean, that is inevitable, right? We're all mortal humans. No, they died within a few months of having it. The original owner apparently died with it in her arms. The vase was passed between a bunch of hands in the 80s before it disappeared, and no one is quite sure where it is located at this moment. In our number five spot, we have the bronze lady. Okay, so this next one can't necessarily be locked up because it's a giant bronze statue, but I'm putting it on this list so y'all can have caution if you ever go near it. Okay. Okay, this statue is located in the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. Yes, the famous cemetery. You may be going there to see ghosts, but apparently the bronze lady is who you should be watching out for. She allegedly wanders the cemetery grounds at night, terrifying anyone who may have entered the grounds. They say that you can hear her weeping if you get close to her, and if you sit on her lap, she'll cry tears of blood. They say if you insult her and hit her in the face, you will be cursed for life. Who the heck is doing that and why? Apparently many a visitor has have ran from the cemetery after an encounter with her. Damn. In our number four spot, we have the Robert doll. Well, right off the bat, I want to lock this one up because of its name. This sounds like the creepiest doll ever. Not that there's anything wrong with the name Robert. I even have a cousin named Robert. It's just Robert and doll together. Sounds creepy. I don't know. Anyways, looking at this doll, I have to say that the creepiness of the name totally matches it. This must be top five creepiest dolls ever, but I wouldn't know. I don't watch a lot of doll movies, and it's been a a long time since I've played with them. I do miss my Barbie days, not gonna lie. The doll was made in Germany and purchased in 1904 and given to a boy named Robert Otto. The legend is that the doll has supernatural powers. After Otto passed away and the doll was passed around, people said that the doll caused car accidents, broken bones, job loss, divorce, and people that visited the museum that it was eventually put in would supposedly experience post-visit misfortunes for failing to respect Robert. Whatever that means. I bet you they were insulting Robert like the bronze lady statue. Who are all these disrespectful animals? In our number three spot, we have the Hope Diamond. This is a very, very beautiful diamond that unfortunately is cursed. So much so that no one should own it. I just realized something. If you were someone that owned such a crazy expensive diamond, would you not do whatever you could to protect it and make sure it was not stolen, such as create a rumor around it possibly being cursed so no one would try to steal it? I mean, I probably would. I wonder if perhaps that's how this started. Anyways, allegedly the Hope Diamond is cursed and has brought about a lot of death in its time. It was extracted in the 17th century in India. Owners of the Hope Diamond were either killed or experienced extreme misfortune. So after a while, it just gained a poor reputation. It's most likely cursed. In our number two spot, we have the cursed ring. This is a ring that needs to be locked up in a vault pronto because it is absolutely cursed. It was once called the Destiny Ring by a shopkeeper who did not want to sell it, but apparently actor Rudolph Valentino had to have it. It was the 1920s and after buying this ring, a series of unfortunate events happened to him before he ended up passing away. A series of unfortunate events actually happened to all who obtained the ring for many years until the ring was bought in an auction in 2017 and there has been no word as to whether the owner of it is still okay. Why oh why was this ring not thrown into a vault? I will never understand people. In our number one spot we have the Bellaroy chair of death. You may be surprised to hear that this is not the only chair that supposedly brings about death. But the other chair is so widely talked about that I thought I would talk about this one on this list. This chair, the Belleroy chair, is a chair that's from the Belleroy mansion that is believed to be very haunted. It's a 200 year old blue chair that sits in the drawing room called the blue room. The chair apparently was once owned by Napoleon and it was made in the 18th century by a person that practices sorcery. So how is this chair bad? you may ask? Well, the legend around this chair is quite fascinating. Allegedly, a red
red mist floats around the chair and people say that the mist is a spirit named Amelia. This spirit allegedly sucks the breath out of anyone that sits in the chair, sucking out their life force and they pass away a few days later. This literally sounds like a part of the plot of Hocus Pocus. I bet you they got their inspiration for the movie from this. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the crying children paintings. These paintings were a series created by an Italian painter who is known as Giovanni Bragolin, but his real name was Bruno Amarillo. Bruno was born in Venice in 1911 and fought in World War II, which ended up being the inspiration for a lot of his paintings. During his time in the war, he saw a lot of suffering children, and this is where he got the idea for the series of crying children paintings. After the paintings were sold, there began to be reports of fires in all of the places where the paintings were held. While this could have just been a strange coincidence, the weirdest part is that the paintings always remained intact while everything else around them was burned. This quickly became the most talked about thing and was on the front of every newspaper and the paintings quickly gained the nickname Diablo. It caused these paintings to end up being replicated and mass produced, but none of the replicas hold quite the same power as the originals. In our number 9 spot today we have the Blarney Stone. For hundreds of years the Blarney Stone has resided within Blarney Castle, which is near Cork, Ireland. The stone is a piece of limestone and legend says that those who give the stone a smooch will then be given the gift of the gab. This little smooch can bestow the power of being able to talk your way out of any situation, which would be incredibly useful, but there are always those who try to indulge in too much of a good thing. The issues start when you attempt to take a piece of the stone, no matter how small, away from its home. Those who don't follow the rules and take the stone end up being cursed with bad luck. Every year the castle receives parcels from greedy tourists who tried their luck at stealing portions of the stone. These parcels are returned with the intention of lifting the curse of misfortune. It is said that once the stone is returned, the curse will be lifted, which is most definitely good news. I guess the moral of this curse, however, is to not be greedy and to just follow the rules. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Screaming Skull. The Screaming Skull resides in the Burton Agnes Hall in England, and it is thought to have belonged to Catherine Anne Griffith. It is said that Catherine was the youngest in the family, and she was the one who enjoyed wandering around the property the most. One day while she was out strolling around, she ended up being surrounded by a group of robbers who took all of her possessions and then viciously harmed her and left her for dead. She was found and brought back to the hall to be tended to, but unfortunately a few days later she succumbed to her injuries. Before she died, she was upset about the thought of leaving her family, so she asked them to remove her head after death and keep her skull so that they would always have a piece of her around. The family agreed to her face, but after her passing, they buried her body, head still intact, because to be fair, it was an odd request. After her burial, the family began experiencing some extremely strange things around the house, like bumps and moans and horrible blood curdling screams that they could not find the source of. This is when they decided to follow through with the request Catherine had left them, and the strange occurrences suddenly stopped. After this, at one point, a maid had found the skull, and in her surprise, she threw it out of a nearby open window, and alas, the strange occurrences began again. In the end, it was decided that the best policy was to place the skull in a secret spot within the walls of the house, probably behind some paneling in the great hall so that its presence could be easily ignored, and so that Catherine's spirit could reside in peace in her beloved home. I guess the lesson of this one is to follow the wishes of those who have passed because you never know if their spirit is going to stay lingering around afterwards. In our number 7 spot today we have the haunted doll. There's quite a few haunted dolls kicking around out there apparently, but this one doesn't exactly have a name. The doll's owners say that this doll is possessed and causes lots of troubles at night. The incredibly creepy thing about this one is that it is said that you don't need to do anything in order for this doll to decide it wants to haunt you, you just simply need to be around it and that is more than enough for the torment to start. Owners of the doll have reported getting a bunch of strange scratches which they believe are because of the doll. It isn't exactly clear where the spirit or spirits that reside in this doll have come from or what happened, but the doll was bought from its previous owners by a woman named Deborah Davies who is a psychic. Deborah reported the same scratches as the previous owners, but she also may have been able to contact the spirit residing in the doll. She claimed that the spirit was that of a young girl who had her life taken from her, but she also reported that the nasty evil energy within the doll is a male, and she believes that this energy is that of the man who took the life of the girl. At the end of the day, whatever is haunting this doll is certainly a spirit I would like to stay far, far away from. In our number 6 spot today we have the ballista balls. A ballista was used in the Roman military and it was kind of similar to a crossbow, but much larger and it could shoot arrows or stones. In 1989, there were archaeologists that were working 
hiding by the Israeli-Syrian border when they found these large stones close to what seemed to be the remains of a ballista. But around 1995, the stones ended up getting stolen, and it took a while for anyone to notice. Fast forward to 2015, and the same stones that were stolen ended up in the courtyard of a museum in Israel with a note left from the person who stole them. The note explained that ever since they took them, he had experienced terrible luck and believed the stones were the reason. He had a very successful business that suddenly began to fail after he took the stones, and later his family abandoned him and he was forced to get rid of almost all of his possessions to settle all of his debts so as to not go bankrupt. He mentioned that he believed the stones were cursed and that they were the root of all of his problems. Whether or not these stones are actually cursed or if this was just some pretty heavy karma, I hope this guy has been able to get his life back on track. In our number 5 spot today we have the Golden Eagle. This car was a 1964 Dodge 330 limited edition and it has been blamed for the death of around 14 people, which is 14 too many if you ask me. It was said that this car started out as a police car originally, but then there were 3 officers assigned to this car who all ended up taking their lives and other people's lives in horribly violent ways. Not in the car. But still, super weird that this all seemed to happen after they had been using the car for work. Because of this strange correlation, it ended up being sold off to another man. Throughout the 80s and 90s, it was said that because of the rumored cursed car, it became a point of interest for vandals. People began vandalizing the car only to meet their own untimely fates, which were all met in strange ways. For example, it was said that one vandal died from being struck by lightning, and another ended up being decapitated by an 18 wheeler. It is said that the curse is so strong that one kid decided to merely touch the car and it sent him into madness as he went on to commit atrocious crimes that I can't even detail here on YouTube. The car now belongs to Wendy Allen who supposedly collects and decorates haunted cars for a living, so it seems as though it's finally found its home far, far, far away from everyone else. In our number 4 spot today we have the Myrtles Plantation Mirror. Myrtles Plantation is located in St. Francisville, Louisiana and it is said to be one of the most haunted places in the entire world. One of the reasons for this spooky reputation is because of a mirror that resides inside. It is said that this mirror holds the spirit of Sarah Woodruff and her two children. Legend goes that a woman named Chloe was a slave at the plantation who drew up a plan to get revenge on the owners of the plantation, Sarah and her husband. Chloe baked a cake full of poison for them but it ended up only being Sarah and two of her children who consumed the poisonous cake. When they passed away, it is said that their spirits went into the only mirror that was uncovered at the time, thus the haunted mirror was born. People who have since visited the plantation have claimed to see the family in the reflection as well as the handprints of small children on the glass despite continuous polishing. In our number 3 spot today we have the Surrey Ghost Car. On December 11th of 2002, a call came into the Surrey Police Department. The caller reported that they had just seen a car lose control and run off the road and then presumably crash. It was of course an emergency call, but not necessarily anything out of the ordinary. That was until authorities got to the location and realized that they couldn't find any kind of evidence of a crash. They kept searching and ended up finding a maroon colored car that was nose down in a ditch nearby, but this car was covered in so much undergrowth that it must have been here for months. This meant that somehow this crash went undetected for 5 months and worst of all, so did the body that lay nearby. Using dental records they were able to identify the body as a man who had been wanted for robbery since July of that year. It is said that the sighting of the car leaving the road was a ghostly replay of the events that had taken place 5 months prior. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments if you think the witness saw a cursed reenactment of the fatal crash, or if you think something else is at play here. In our number 2 spot today we have the Destiny Ring. Rudolph Valentino was an incredibly famous silent film star before he passed away at the incredibly young age of just 31 years old, and there are many out there who believe his untimely death was caused by the destiny ring. This ring was one that he picked up from a California jeweler. Before purchasing it, there were warnings of the stories which claimed this ring was cursed, but Rudolph decided to go ahead with the purchase anyway. It is said that after this ring came into his possession, his luck began to turn. The movies he starred in started to do poorly, some even flopping, and his career began to struggle. From there, he fell incredibly ill, and when he passed away, he was wearing this cursed 
ring. From there, after his death, his lover ended up receiving the ring, but once it was in her possession, she too felt extremely ill and decided to give the ring away. All the owners after that were reported to have died in strange ways or under mysterious circumstances, which has led the ring to now being placed in a bank vault, all locked up so that it hopefully can never cause harm to anyone ever again. In our number one spot today, we have Letta the doll. Why do all the cursed dolls look like they would be cursed? You know what I mean? Like there's no cursed doll out there that is surprisingly cursed. They all look creepy to begin with. Anyway, Letta is a doll that is said to be around 200 years old and extremely cursed. This doll is called Letta for short as its full name is Letta Me Out of Here. Really clever. The doll was originally found underneath a house which definitely feels like the origin story of a haunted doll. This creepy discovery came 47 years ago and apparently Letta still lives with the man who found him. The hauntings of Letta include things like the doll walking around on its own at night, the owners finding objects around the house that have been moved into odd places, some people have seen Letta move right in front of their own eyes, and the owner also reports finding little doll sized scuff marks around the house as well. It is said that this doll once belonged to a child who passed away while holding it, thus their spirit became trapped inside of the doll. Apparently one day in an interview about Letta, as the interviewer was asking questions about the little boy, the doll began to move in her lap. Yeah, no thank you. Letta has his own Instagram and Facebook page in case you want to hear more about all the creepiness surrounding this cursed doll. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army was discovered in China and it is a massive piece of funerary art that is thought to be one of the most massive archaeological finds of modern times. It truly is incredible and it's something that's been attracting tourists from all over the world since its discovery. But for those who did the discovering, well, things haven't really been going so well. In 1974, there were seven farmers who happened to stumble upon this huge discovery and you would think that this would come with some kind of a reward, but instead things have been going terribly for the farmers. Soon after the discovery, the government claimed their farmland. After this, their homes were demolished in order to make way for the exhibition halls and gift shops that were to come. They didn't just get nothing for this discovery, they ended up losing because of it. This is exactly why many people believe that perhaps with the unearthing of this huge piece, they also dug up some sort of curse that was buried long ago. In our number 9 spot today we have the water jug. Okay, state sales, they're weird places, there are weird things, there's some quirky items, but this has got to be one of the strangest on a whole bunch of different levels. It's a decorative drinking jug, but it's being held in a miniature cart that's being pulled by a porcelain donkey. I cannot make this item up, nor could I make up the fact that this kitschy item is also apparently haunted. The seller of this item spoke about how he grew up with the item around as it was always displayed at his grandmother's house and she always kept it full of water. This was all fine and dandy until after she passed away when he was taking care of the estate and he bumped into it. How was the jug filled with water when no one was there to fill it? He thought that perhaps it was just old leftover water and he just ignored it, but the same thing seemed to happen repeatedly. And it wasn't even like the water level was staying the same, it would increase seemingly all on its own. The seller decided that this was not an item that they wanted to hold on to and decided it would be best to pass on to someone who is ready to take on this very mysterious and very strange object. In our number 8 spot today we have the Destiny Ring. Rudolph Valentino was an incredibly famous silent film star before he passed away at the incredibly young age of just 31 years old. And there are many out there who believe his untimely death was caused by the Destiny Ring. This ring is one that he picked up from a California jeweler, but before purchasing it there were warnings of the stories which claimed the ring was cursed, but Rudolph decided to just go ahead with the purchase anyway. It is said after this ring came into his possession, his luck really began to turn. The movies he starred in started to do poorly, some even flopping, and his career really began to struggle. From there he fell incredibly ill and when he passed away he was wearing this cursed ring. From there after his death, his lover ended up receiving saving the ring, but once it was in her possession, she too fell extremely ill and she decided to give the ring away. All the owners after that were reported to have died in strange ways or under mysterious circumstances, which has led the ring to now being placed in a bank vault all locked up so that it hopefully can never cause harm to anyone ever again. In our number 7 spot today we have the Bassano vase. The Bassano vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in 
Napoli. On the wedding night, however, the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last breaths, she vowed to have her revenge, and at this point, it became unclear whether the vase was already cursed, or perhaps if this may be what caused the curse in the first place. As time went on, the vase was handed from person to person within her family, and with each new owner came another mysterious death. Because of this, the family decided to hide the vase away in some sort of a secret location, and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned, beware, this vase brings death. Well, of course, whoever found the vase did not listen, and instead, they sold it once again. The first buyer, who is said to have been a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then there was a 37-year-old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it three months with the vase in his possession, and at this point, you get where this is going. Right now, we don't know exactly where the vase ended up, but I'm just hoping it's somewhere deep underground, or in space, or something else far, far away from us all. In our number 6 spot today, we have the mask. This metal mask resembles the face of a monkey, it's definitely already a little strange looking, but the story behind it is even more interesting. According to the seller of this item, they explained that they acquired the mask in Thailand, but not before they experienced a supernatural battle where a witch used spells to bind the spirit of a jinn to the mask, trapping it. Since then, the mask is said to be full of supernatural powers, some of which could bring benefits, but it takes a whole pile of work. This mask is said to have the ability to fend off vampires as well as potentially bring riches to its owner, but it needs some things in return. The entity in the mask needs regular offerings of food and drink, and it also requires the owner to meditate in front of it for 20 minutes three times a day. Talk about high maintenance. If a person refuses to do these things while in possession of the mask, it is said that a cruel fate awaits them. I mean, what do you expect when you anger an ancient spirit? In our number five spot today, we have the cursed chest. The story of this cursed chest starts off with a horrible person named Jeremiah Graham, who is said to have been making preparations for his firstborn son. Part of these preparations was having a hand carved chest made, and the person he got to make this chest was a man who he had enslaved named Remus. When when Remus finished the chest, Jeremiah was not satisfied, so he began to harm Remus, who would unfortunately later pass away from his injuries. The other people who lived and worked in the home were rightfully horrified and angry about this situation, so they decided to sprinkle dried owl blood inside of the drawers, all while placing a curse on the chest. It is said that the curse brought tragedy to anyone who put their clothes inside of it, and apparently it is a curse that is working with a vengeance, as it is said that this chest and the curse are responsible for taking the lives of at least 16 people. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Goblet. This is an item that was found in a museum, but it was a museum of specifically haunted things, so I feel like it still counts. This goblet is said to have been used for rituals of necromancy, which poses a few questions for me personally. What did they put in it and presumably drink out of it? Holy water? Wine? Blood? All of the above? Who knows? Either way, here's the real kicker. This goblet was of course for sale on eBay, because why not? And the seller was claiming that it has an amazing energy to it. Okay, what kind of energy? Well, they said that some find it strangely positive, but that many perceive it as negative and malignant. All right. Don't think I'll be bidding on that auction, to be honest. In our number three spot today, we have the beds. Back in 1986, couple Deborah and Alan Tallman moved into a new home with their children in Wisconsin. The following year, they bought a second hand set of bunk beds for their children for $100, but as it would turn out, they bought much more than they had originally bargained for. When they brought the bunk beds into their home, they clearly must have brought something else along with it. It started when they began to see strange shapes in their home, and they would hear disembodied voices that despite how hard they tried, they could not find the source of. They found themselves fighting with clocks and radios that turned on and off by themselves. They would find furniture that had moved seemingly all by itself, and sometimes they'd even see an apparition of an old woman. In the end, they not only threw the beds in a landfill, but they also moved from the home just to be safe. As far as we know, the beds remained in the landfill, but who's to say for sure? In our number two spot today, we have the Belcourt Castle chairs. Belcourt Castle is 
located in Newport, Rhode Island, and it is a former summer cottage. Construction on the cottage started in 1891, with it being completed in 1894, and inside there is a ballroom. This ballroom is important because it is said that it holds a group of haunted chairs. People who have visited the castle have reported a ton of strange happenings regarding this specific set of chairs. The reports include things like feeling chills racing up and down their spines, or feeling a strange sensation in a shift of energy while standing near the chairs, and some people have even explained how they have been pushed out of the chairs by an invisible force. I feel like just hearing stories might be enough to explain the energy shift some people are feeling, but actually being pushed out of a chair by some sort of invisible force would be absolutely terrifying. In our number one spot today, we have doorknobs. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to ever hear about haunted doorknobs, but this might just be a thing that really does exist. These doorknobs were listed on eBay, and the seller explained that they were once the knobs seen on the doors at an asylum, which truly lands on the list of creepiest places in the world. Considering everything that is said to have gone on at places like these, it truly doesn't surprise me one bit. We're looking at you, lobotomies and other horrific mental health treatments of the past. These doorknobs must have quite literally opened the door to some terrifying things that I'm sure many of us would prefer to not even think about. According to the eBay listing, the asylum that they came from after it was abandoned is said to have had strange whispers, occurrences, and horrifying noises coming from it. This is all to say that maybe that trip to Home Depot is better than buying antique just this one time. In our number 10 spot, we have the Donald Trump mask. It's probably cursed because along with how funny it is, it's also terrifying. Imagine seeing someone wear this walk by you. If they had, you know, a similar build to him and they wore like a turtleneck, then I would probs think it was him. The extremely orange face with the white eyes is too much. Too funny and terrifying at the same time. In our number nine spot, we have a zombie mug. Merch like this makes me terrified, but also excited. This mug is super creepy though, and most definitely cursed. This is a mug that when heated, a zombie appears in the cup with blood on its hands. The zombie's face is quite chilling, that it actually feels like there's some kind of spirit attached to it. Anyone else? The zombie is also like pretty bloody too, no thanks. Definitely stay away from this product unless you like dealing with dark spirits then by all means go for it. In our number eight spot, we have the faceless carving. This is an item of a mother and daughter hugging that's a carving made of willow tree. The only thing is the mother and daughter do not have faces. Look, I love my mom, she's one of my best friends, and I love cheesy lovey-dovey products to show that you love someone, but this isn't the one. <laughs> I don't know man, seeing this, I got the instant creeps, and I personally think this item might be haunted. There's so much detail in the figurine, why leave the faces Blank. From what I've gathered, there are a lot of items similar to this made from a brand called Willow Tree, and honestly, I think their intention seems to be to make some sort of comforting merch. At least that's what they say in their marketing. But personally, there's something spooky about these figurines without faces. Faceless items just feel too horror movie for me. Quite possibly haunted and therefore cursed. In our number seven spot, we have the creepy pen holder. Okay, so this item is just creepy. It's a pen holder with a little red man figurine lying on the floor, and the hole where you put your pen in is right in its heart. Who the heck thought of this? What was their thought process? Who were they imagining this guy to be? And why don't they have better friends to say, hey man, maybe don't make such a low vibe product. The world is low vibe enough these days. This item is not cursed in your typical ghostly way, but it definitely is just low vibes to begin with, so anyone who buys it is sure to continue the low vibe train and sit in a bit of a crappy headspace. In our number six spot, we have the LED mask. Look, I'm conflicted. On one hand, this is kind of cool to look at at first, if you're into LEDs. On the other, it's very creepy, and also it can't be good to wear LEDs so close to your face, can it? I don't know. 
I don't know much about electricity and lights, but something makes me nervous about wearing lights on my face. And I'm concerned that no one even asked the seller about that. The mask itself is also the face of something out of a nightmare, so there's also that. I could see a John Wayne Gacy of this time using this mask while plotting his next kill, and that just gives me the shivers, not gonna lie. With its creepiness and the fact that it's probably not very safe to wear LEDs on your face, at least for long, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this product may curse you with some kind of low vibe situation in your future if bought. In our number five spot, we have a kitty salt and pepper holder. Look, I'm a cat and dog person. I love them both. I sway a little more on the dog side, but whatever, they tend to give you more love. Anyways, my point is that I love all cat and dog merch, but this, this is terrifying. This is a cat salt and pepper shaker that could have been made cute and adorable, but it looks like it it may possess you. <laughs> First off, the cat is dark gray with shades of black. Could they have not made him white or orange or give him a cute yellow collar? Anyways, it's really the face that's terrifying. Couldn't they have modeled the face off of the cat from Shrek? It's so cute with the big eyes. <sighs> no, they made the cat look like it will probably eat you while you're sleeping. In our number four spot, we have the toilet mug. I'm throwing this one on the list because it's clearly cursed to make make you want to throw up every time you have your morning cup of tea. This is a toilet tea mug. I can't, just why? If you are someone watching this and you have bought this item, please, please explain in the comment section below. It's just so beyond gross. It's definitely a funny gift, but also a waste because it's so gross that I just can't imagine anyone drinking from it and not feeling like they must now run to the real toilet. <laughs> Anyways, if anything, I want to argue that it's cursed with not being used much and definitely will make people feel ill. In our number three spot, we have the Let's Summon Demons shirt. Let's not. <laughs> Maybe let's go outside and play in the grass under the sun or make chalk drawings on the pavement or beat Pokemon Gold again like it's 2002 and do everything but summon demons, okay? <laughs> Why is there a shirt that is encouraging people to summon demons? Clearly the creator that made it was being possessed by demons himself or herself, and the demons gathered together to plan how they can possess more people, and alas, came upon the plan of encouraging people to summon them through a t-shirt with cute humans holding hands while standing on a giant pentagram. In our number two spot, we have a satanic ring. Whether you're religious or not, I'm sure you can look at this product and feel uneasy. It's a gold-plated stainless steel ring that has a devil skeleton with a cross on its forehead. It's extremely dark. Anything to do with the devil just makes me uneasy, but honestly, there's nothing about this product that feels positive. Even as a Halloween ring, I feel like it's just too much. The vibe around it is quite low, and I'm pretty convinced that anyone that buys it will be doomed to feeling low while wearing it. Could be just me, but I believe that we should be careful with what we put on us as objects carry energy, and even if you got someone to cleanse an object, something like this, you'll always know that its maker had low vibe intentions when creating it, so therefore, it could always possibly be low vibes. In our number one spot, we have the Furby doll. Guys, stay away from this doll. I had to put this in first because I had so many creepy situations that happened with this doll that I'm convinced it's possessed. Also, it's not just me. Literally, this was trending a few years ago where people told their possessed Furby doll experiences and I instantly felt more creeped out as that totally confirmed my own experiences. Literally, I would be talking to my mom and the doll would say something that would be in response to what we were talking about. Or it would just, you know, make noise or blink when the battery wasn't in it. I'm telling ya, this item is not to be played with. If you have a haunted Furby story, oh my gosh, please share in the comment section below. We wanna hear it. Mm -hmm.